exciting. I'm trying to just uh, see if we can see if we can figure it out. Very exciting behind the scenes look. <laughs> This is the scene. We're not behind anything. Give me a call. You can try the link again now, or you can try updating your YouTube app. I should have asked Teresa to update her YouTube app before, before we started. See what people are saying. Okay, good. That would be alive. nice. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're waiting for our um, one of our customer requests. Um, her name's Teresa to join us live. So hopefully we can sort that out. But today we are going to so you... oh. make the stag, also known as an elk. Well, two different things, and we're going to talk about that. I can't see that far, Kyla. Oh, okay. All right. I, I just see. wanted to show you what it looks okay, like thank if you. we don't have our person. Oh, okay. Is... Okay. That's good. Yeah, it's not okay. like a weird. Oh, wait. I better check my phone because I turned my um, volume off. She said she will have to try updating. All right. Okay. While you try, I'm going to explain a couple of things. Michelle. Probably you should just They probably can't hear. Yeah. Really? From over here? Yeah. yeah. Wow, it's being very thorough. <laughs> it's like uh, animated <laughs> wallpaper. Animated <laughs> wallpaper. My answers, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we got a new gimbal. So hopefully the images are really stable. It's pretty good. Oh. And a laptop and Talbot over yonder filming. Her link just says troubleshoot a go live invite. So um, I don't know how to access that. Let me try. The link, she sent the link that I can open. Yes, let me go back to that. That was a while ago. We text a lot. We've got some lunch texts <laughs> and this one. That one? Yes. That is the one I believe I said. Is there anything on the phone that is like a 
reminder or like, just just says like... waiting for guest. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Doesn't let me do anything. Add guest. We could copy it again. Let's copy it again. Copied. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but. New one from on us. with us. Let's see if that one works. I wonder what we could do besides send her a link directly from the current live stream. Room. Oops. Oh my gosh. I just. What'd you do? I just sent it to you. <laughs> and uh, we also have. Well, we were bound to have a shop hop where we had some technical difficulties. try to Albert, this is fun. Don't I thought that's what we were gonna do because it was we weren't gonna have a second camera we were just gonna do chat I'm going to try to email it. Okay. And we'll just get started. You can join in the chat also. And we also have Kathleen, 
um, also requested the elk. So we will. the best at being out. Even's here. I see okay, her. good, good. And who is our other first book other than Laura? Teresa. And uh, one more little step to try, and then Shh. get our little dog here. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I, right hey, are you all ready for this? That is exciting. Oh. So today we are going to share an armature, and thanks for bearing with us, by the way. Um, and we're having ten percent off today, right? Yes. And you activated that? There, it's happening. <laughs> um, so we had two requests: one for a stag and one for an elk. And actually, it's three because Teresa wanted to make her stag similar to a statue that she has, which is bronze. So um, she picked out colors that have those bronze colors, the teals, purples, um, browns, and golds. So we're gonna kind of cover three projects in one. I have the armature here, and this is pretty much to scale to the reindeer and the moose. And uh, if you have a pencil, you're going to take some notes because I'm going to tell you verbally what the what the measurements are and um, yeah, jot it down. So I used a 32 inch and a 34 inch 14 gauge wire. And that is, as usual, the head and front legs and the back and hind legs. And then I also had a 20 inch and an 18 inch wire. And so the 20 inch wire goes over the shoulders and makes a little withers bump and wraps to the front legs. And then the 18 inch wire gets wrapped to the hind legs. So this project will weigh between six and seven ounces. Um, I'm just gonna check if that's Teresa. <laughs> okay. Nope. Um, so two wires you definitely want your 14 gauge wire twisted together. And so I'll give you the measurements now. You twist the head and neck six inches, and then that gives you a two and a half inch head and a three and a half inch neck. So the first twist is six inches, then you make your head bend at two and a half inches. And I put the little curve in their neck. Then you make the, just like all our other armatures, you marry the two wires together at the shoulder with two internal twists on each side. And then your remaining uh, length gets twisted together with your 20 inch wire. I left a one and a half inch hump. And then you want to twist together six inches. And then I've been, instead of folding the toes, I've been cutting the toes at three quarters of an inch because when this gets a 22 gauge wire on it, um, the 22 gauge wire gets folded over the end of the toe and just covers up that, that pointy part. So after you twist together six inches, then the, um, the elbow is at one and a half inches. And this distance is about four, 
four to four, like more like four and a quarter, probably. The back, which you'd probably build the whole armature first, then put your extra wires on, is six and a half inches. And that goes from the arm to the end of the twist. That's how I measure this distance. So that's six and a half inches. Then you put your 18 inch wire on the back legs and twist them together six and a half inches. And then I put the stifle at two inches, the hock at two and a quarter, and the ankle at two and a half with um, three quarter inch toes. Let's say that one more time. The stifle is at the oh, that's so kind of you. Stifle at two, two, two point two five. Yes, and then two and a half to the ankle, two and two and a quarter to two and a half, and then um, three quarter inch toes. And then this would get covered with. On the legs, I would use a 22 gauge wire and fold it over um, each toe. So fold it over toe, go back up and fold it over a toe. And the rest gets the cleaners? Or, or 22 gauge. You could use a 22 gauge and maybe have um, a little tail, tail wire even. Um, yeah, so this works for the elk and the stag. Elk are larger. Their coloring is a little different. Their antlers are a little different. They're sort of, they're both members of the deer family. Um, and elk are in North America. And the red stag or the European, Central European stag is slightly smaller, you know, a little lighter, um, more, a little more reddish in color. I do have a couple of pictures here, but Definitely. These are just, these are old printouts. So definitely look it up to see, um, see what you learn about it. There's a lot of webs. There's even websites that just straight out tell you the difference between an elk and a stag. So that's an elk. Like I said, crappy, crappy print out. Love the coloring. They have a little dark on their face, on their legs and on their neck. And then that nice, like, off-white tan butt and then the red stag um, also has a lighter butt which you don't see in this picture but more of a coppery um, coppery color so that is that is the project and um, you could you could if you have done either of the uh, reindeer or moose tutorials, you're going to have the skills um, in place to, to do a, an elk or a stag, no doubt. Mm. All right, so we're going to shop. Teresa's saying she's on. Oh, but, good. But we do not, we do not see her. Is there um, like a black spot or is it just, there's a thing that says waiting for guests, so. None of the options. Okay. Right. Oh, we're still trying to get Teresa hooked up. Did you get it? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. There we go. Yay! <laughs> or is it just... Yeah, so... Oh. Oh. Hi there. Hi! <laughs> Have you been um, watching or have you been? Oh, yes. I <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> uh, Teresa, mute your computer playback. Hi. <laughs> have you been um, watching or have you been? Oh, yes. I she won't I'm be able to hear you. She'll be able to hear on this conversation, though, because we're live now. Right? She's watching the live. Teresa, uh, we have her on now. We'll see. <laughs> so can she hear us now with being muted? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. You muted your computer? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Yay. Good. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to we're gonna stop, start shopping. And we're going to shop for 
I'm going to talk about the elk and the stag. And then I also pulled, um, Teresa was very prepared and had a list of the colors that she wanted for the bronze coloring. And I pulled that and I'll show that as well. But the first thing we need to do is go get some wire. I'm going to come right by you. Shopping cart. <laughs> you should be doing your little shopping cart dance. I have a shopping cart dance. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's like one of the dances. <laughs> shopping cart. So we're gonna use the 14 gauge. I think it's plenty. Um, if you were worried about the weight, you could for your second wires on the legs um, that you add to the front and hind legs, you could use 12 gauge. Um, I like have been using the 22 gauge or 20, actually for the legs, we're going to want the 26 gauge and one wire should go down the leg and be able to hit each toe and encompass that end toe wire. So that's 26 gauge. If you have a 22 gauge wire, you can use that on the body or chenille stem. When I do um, reindeer and moose, I love having swax. Um, it, you could also use the cold wax medium. The swax definitely really gets in there and gives you a little bit more sculpting power because because it's more it's more dense, whereas the cold wax sits on top a little bit. But um, if you wrap your toes real tight, I definitely would add some swax. Hmm. Oh, so much swax. Talbot's been busy. Uh, while we're over here, we have some core over here, and I'm going to grab our coal and coffee bean. Let me look at my list. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go the long way. Sarah, was it 26 gauge for the antlers? Oh, thank you. Good point. So, good thing we grabbed 26 and 22 because I would start the antlers with a 22. Um, and then, like, we do the goat and then add another 22 and then use the 26 to make all the points. I'm pretty sure that I read in my information that the elk generally has six points on its antlers. And the stag is more brainy and does all kinds of crazy things. Um, I love the stags that we kind of imagine in, a, I don't know, fairy tales and like Scottish <laughs> lore and something. <laughs> they have really, so you just totally go for it. Okay. I definitely would have black. This is for going to be for hooves, eyes, and any any dark details that you need to pull out. And then for the well, for both of them, um, Gen Gen Tan is a great neutral blender and just sort of that soft tan color. This could be the elk's butt, although I would go a little lighter on that probably. And I do see this in the elk's face a lot. So Gen Gen Tan is good. You won't use a much white, but some Serafina white or even just the little eye dots, but other details might be needed. So if you have some white on hand, that's great. But you generally, I end up using some white on my animals. And then I'm gonna grab some copper, uh, copper core. This is a beautiful color for both projects, especially the stag, that, that coppery balance between um, red and brown. Perfect. Now, on the coat, there are so many options. It's a little hard to say, you know, definitely get this or do you need this. Mm -hmm. Talking about you know, shaggy 
natural colors that we use all the time. And there's many approaches. But I, you could incorporate smooth brown top. You could incorporate alpaca. You could incorporate any of these beautiful natural, um, natural sheep colors, which I definitely see in the elk. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Minx and brown finish are very close. I'm going to grab the Minx. It has a little bit more red to it. And there it is compared to the Shetland Moret. But what I think would work really well are some of the horse coats and skin tones. And so we'll get some of those. And it also depends on how much layering you're going to do. So for both animals, I would get some fur and or alpaca for the neck. So while I'm here, I'm going to grab some brown alpaca. And then I think I'll mix in some really dark. Oh, Talbot, I feel like you're really close. I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your pores look great. Oh my gosh. No, they don't. Um, okay, so I'm trying to decide whether to talk about both animals at the same time. I think what I'll do is as we go through, pull for both animals at the same time. And then when we get back to the counter, I'll show sort of how I would divvy up the fiber for each one. Um, okay, so for the elk. I see more light tones, they're tan, um, and then they have these dark points. So I like Palomino, it's a beautiful golden color, Tawny. Let's look at Tawny and Palomino next to each other so that you guys can see. It's subtle. The Tawny, the Palomino is a little more balanced with um, brown and cool, whereas the tawny has a little more yellow, I guess is the way to describe it. Um, so I'm going to go with Palomino. I feel like that suits the front better. And then I can use, I can use buck and woodland on both as well. Um, acorn could be in there. And with a combo like this, you could blend your heart out and have all different tones and variations that you want, especially with the Gen Gen Tan added. <laughs> oh, another possibility would be um, liver chestnut, especially on the legs. So the elk really darkens on the legs and the stag, I've seen some lighter and some darker, but they stay more uniform color down their legs. Um, but the liver chestnut horse coat is great for that, those small spots and that sort of direct stabbing on the face as well. Same as the skin tones. The pelts are created with fiber that has a little more length for shingling and for pelts. So it's just a slightly different fiber texture, even though a lot of the colors are similar. Any questions right now, Kyle? Uh, not really. Okay. I'm gonna get, I love the skin tones for animals. So, um, Arabica is beautiful, beautiful balanced brown. So, so is bronze. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the cart and olive <laughs> and then, yep. and then we're going to sort of assess, you know, take them back and assess and see what we want. If you want to get a shot of this, um, tell that you can see how like so many of the colors are similar. So example, for example, you probably wouldn't need woodland and the skin tone, but we'll, we'll choose. We'll definitely pick and choose. All right, we're going to go to the fur. And Teresa, I have your, um, your colors set aside as well already. 
Um, I think I put bison, bison and Sasquatch as mm. as possibilities for the necks on either. They have. I think they have what we need. The elk, you could go darker with mink as well. So really subtle, subtle differences between these between these colors. Okay. Let us take a look at everything that we pulled and why. And sort of, I'm going to sort of divide them up into, um, into elk and, oh, will you grab an off-white chunk of four? Sure. Someone asked what yellow color was next to peacock. Um, peacock. Which it must, well, pig, the pig man is there, but. Oh, the tawny? Must look more yellow maybe than you came across. I can pull it over. Probably the pigs or some yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, so we have our armature that works for both. And we have our elk and our stag. And then we have Teresa's bronze coloring. Alright, let's do Do you want this. me to do a top down? Um I think I'll pull it out if you can see this area okay. I mean, I could stand here and get an overhead very easily. I think it's okay because I might hold stuff up. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Off white chunky core could could be for the elk because they do have a lot of light on their body. But we also really like the copper core and that could work for either, either project. And I grabbed um, charcoal and Coffee bean also definitely could be used on either project. So some lighter pour and some darker pour, I think is going to help. The stag has lighter features on its face. And so using a lighter pour, like off white chunky pour, or even copper could work, um, is going to give you the right face shape pour color. The elk is darker on the face. And then we have Jen Jen Tan. And Jen Jen Tan's great. It spans the area between core wool and top coat. And in this project, also spans those fibers in the color as well. Now, it's a little bit more of personal choice, felting style, um, and your reference image. Let me back up a little bit. We have our armature wire. Have 26 gauge for legs and hooves and antler spines, and then 22 gauge for the antlers. Lane's asking for an estimate for the core weight, mm -hmm. like how much core. So the whole project is in the six to seven ounce range. Um, four ounces, like, should be good because you've got to figure the antlers weigh a lot, top coat. Why, um, the armature, but somewhere between, I would have between four and six on hand. If you have two or three different cores, that, it, that should be plenty, especially one of the, if one of them is off white chunky core. Um, these three are two ounces and Jen Jen Tan is, is one ounce. Before you hop in, someone said is the, um, tutorial for the elk stag in the advanced tutorials yes. which we have a reindeer and a moose yes there is so. there is none so the whole the idea behind the shop hop is to give you a head start on projects that we don't have a tutorial for so if you have a project that you want to create you can email me at serafina at gmail.com tell me what your project is and then i'm going to help figure out which textures, colors, fibers, tools, and wires work. Um, the next three shop hops, this one included, we are, I'm doing the armature and um, we have 10% off on this on Friday. So um, to celebrate our 10 years, our 
10th anniversary, which snuck up on <laughs> Are the cloth covered wires um, steel rather than mm -hmm. aluminum? Mm -hmm. um, so yes, no tutorial, but having, if you have the reindeer, even the deer maybe under your belt, the deer is a free tutorial. The reindeer and the moose are both paid tutorials. Um, you can definitely figure out a stag. Um, same, it's going to be the same shapes, and it's just, it's just tweaking the proportions. You know, using your reference image and um, refining it to to match. So now we are. Oh, we and then we have swax. Swax for our toes. You could swax your antlers. It's a bit much and might get pretty heavy. So if you do want to put on your antlers, I would do uh, cold cold wax medium. But usually I leave antlers fuzzy because they are velvety depending on the time of year. And it just makes sense. Animals that have horns, um, goats, rhinos, etc. I usually do put some, some swax on there. We have black core for hooves and eyes. And if you really wanted to blend and get anything darker, you could definitely mix it with some black core. Okay, so now, and then, like I said, Serafina white, not a ton of it in the project, but you might wanna have that. So now we get into a lot of sort of similar, similar colors and tones, and you won't need all of these, but you will want to decide which ones you want. So I'm gonna line them up by type. So I have skin tones, I have pelts. Oh my gosh, so much fun. This, he's really light, this elk. Mm -hmm. And then I have horse coat. And then I have all kinds of, <laughs> well, this is a, a a natural sheep wool, and then I have alpaca and fur. Um, gosh, I'm feeling for the elk, you could even go lighter than Palomino, but it might just be my bad printout. I, I, I <laughs> are, they, are they gray at all? Definitely more. Um, brown tan. There might, it's more brown tan. There might be a tiny bit of gray in there, but um, yeah. So skin tones and horse coats, the blend is made for smooth and direct stabbing. So these are gonna work really well on the legs and face. So maybe what you would want is to pick two, you know, two or th of, of out of these. Whereas the top coat and the pelt are longer and they're going to work really well on the pelt and have a little bit of that shagginess for shingling or if you decide to do the pelt approach which is where I lay it all out and then put it on top um, depending on whether it's summer or winter how shaggy you want it that's what these are going to work well for and then your alpaca and your fur can get mixed into the neck um, I would shingle side and get that nice full furry neck and then you can wet it and scrunch it um, with water. You could use locks as well. Um, I know that uh, Teresa picked out some locks that I think she plans on using on the neck area. So yeah, that's, that's this project in a nutshell. And um, I would definitely would go more liver chestnut buck for the stag and then for the elk, you need kind of a wider range because they have this light color and then they go deep. So let's see, I'm gonna go kind of like more like this and then these over here. Yeah, so you just gotta, you just gotta split it up the way that 
the way that works for your project. Okay, so now I'm going to show what Teresa picked out because she wants to actually create almost with wool like a bronze statue. And Teresa, did you say that you want to move towards realism in one part of it or you want the whole thing to have um, that bronze look? Um. Yes, I'd like it to look uh, partly real, but I want the highlights definitely to look more metallic and be bronzy. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you had a great list going, and, you know, hopefully from the rest of the Shop Hop, you can see what the other options are. Um, and I think you were going more towards stag, and we have some core, uh, you picked out charcoal and copper, which are really fun to bounce against each other. Maybe some um, coffee would be mm. good as well. And then you picked out um, eggplant as a way to deepen um, and darken colors, which I think is great. I added wood because the two of these together make a really dynamic dark and mm. bounce out each other in terms of their, um, their coloring. And then for highlights, um, we have acorn and buck pelts, which will look really cool coming off of these. It's, and I also pulled, and you had, um, bronze fiber art locks I noticed in your in your basket um, yeah but I, I also pulled out a bronze fiber art bundle because there's so much fun happening in here just easily and naturally already um, that you don't have to blend or create do you know what I mean I'm going to open it up so you can see and your locks your locks will do that as well um, I also grabbed Blackberry, which is another deep purple. All right, let me open this up so you guys can see on camera how cool a fiber art bundle is. Plus, we have this um, silk that has so many colors going on in it that if you blended some of that in to get that Alex Shine, that would be awesome. This is a short staple merino. It will felt, it will needle felt or wet felt very well. And it has a lot of color changes in it. Sorry for the phone. This is mohair, also full of shine and length and curl. So if this got worked into the neck main, it would be. Um, really beautiful especially if like you mix that in with locks or used it for the transition between locks and um the rest of the body and then the bundle has a huge variety of locks um we've got bigger well-defined ones long soft well-defined it'll have some tighter curls like this and so the fiber art bundle has a really fun range of color sort of already happening. But the things that you picked, um, you're going to be basically be creating that in how you blend them together and layer them. And then to finish off, um, the bronze stag idea. He has some. Um, love this idea of the sage tussa. I also pulled some camel fur, which will make those golden highlights that you wanted. And then these um, are just two more browns. I have bronze and arabica skin tones that uh, help you on your face, but. 
but I think it's pretty much mimicking some colors that are already here. So I'm not sure that you need those. Any questions, Kyla? Uh, I think I answered, but I can okay. double check. Um, as far as the antlers, it would be more like the reindeer and not the moose, right? As far as building them and then using reference pictures to make sure the points yeah, are right they, and everything. Yes, the, um, like I said, the elk has a pretty standard rack like among the species. And I feel like when I looked at the European um, stag pictures, there was just a, there was a bigger range. So it would take more research to say mm -hmm. what's typical or what's normal or mm -hmm. accurate, I guess. Um, but yeah, you're gonna use the gauge um, from the top, fold it in half, bring it down under, once you've got this wrapped a little bit, and then bring it back up. So you're just bring coming around and then bringing it back up and then take a second 22 gauge and go across the top of the head and twist them together. And that should be strong enough to make a great you know, base for your, whatever you're going to build off of your antlers. When I tend to make things kind of like, what's the word that we use? Like exaggerated or, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not super concerned with like total realism. Like I like to exaggerate features. So, mm -hmm. you know, make puffier, make the antlers bigger. Make <laughs> so that's how I work. So just have fun with it because, you know, we're creating and, um, and sort of enhancing what we see and what we love and what is characteristic of that animal, whatever the animal is. So that's that's kind of how I how I think of it. Slightly off topic, what camera and gimbal is Talbot using because the picture is really clear and the movement oh, is smooth? Oh, great. Okay, good. We're using um, Kyla's phone. <laughs> <laughs> and we could put the... Um, gimbal in goods and faves yeah um, this is our first time using it that's awesome feedback um, talbot spent some time learning about it it has a, it has a lot of settings that i don't know about yet but um so that, that yeah this will be tried and true and we can we can recommend it i have an iphone 11 maybe it's okay. not like yeah super, yeah super new sarah <laughs> Yes. Can I show you my stag? He's right here. Yes, I'd love to see it. Can you close it? Sorry. <laughs> Look. There he is. Hey. We got him? Yeah, there's a delay, so I have to wait. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. That's a, that's a great shape. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. If you can see his antlers light up. Yeah, that's, that's a great piece. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I did a stick that was really big. Remember that? Mm -hmm. My friend bought it. Um, I think it was like 14 inches at the shoulder. That was one of those one-offs. So um, maybe I'll share some pictures on Fanfare uh, when mm -hmm. we're finished. Um, and I think I was a little confused about what it was exactly, but it was more of a stag than an elk. So it wasn't like being really paying attention to what a stag is. <laughs> it was just making more of like a kind of like a fantasy, a fantasy creature. Yeah, I can't wait to see. I know you got some stuff already, so I can't wait to see what you make. I hope you'll share it. Certainly will. Yeah. Does anyone um, have any questions, Kyla? Let me see if I have anything in my notes that I want to share. Ooh. Not questions that I see. Captain's mm -hmm. first day. Oh, this was someone asked about the next to the peacock. Oh. I don't know if it looked yellow as we scanned past, but oh, it's pink. Just giving them 
pig is very anything. sad next to peacock. It doesn't have anything <laughs> to do with the stag, but um let's see summer winter so the summer elk more of a coppery brown the winter elk has that lighter tan um heavy coat the legs and neck are darker than the body only the male has antlers and they grow every year it's just the way antlers work i describe their head as a deer meets a cow um <laughs> so very triangular when you make build that head um, it's going to be triangular, almost like a triangle with its tip cut off. The stag is the European red deer. It's slightly smaller. So an elk comes in, um, the male between six and 700 pounds and the stag between four and 500 pounds. And the legs are similar to the shade of the deer could be slightly light, lighter or slightly darker. Um, more branching antlers. That was my, that was my info. So yeah, it's fun. I um, haven't made a stag in a long time. I made a white stag a long time ago. I haven't. Um, oh, like the book. What book? A children's book called The White Stag. Oh, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> Anne asked if the job was already filled. I believe um, she lives in the Netherlands. So oh. <laughs> I said that would be quite a commute for her. Um, no, I had a nice interview, um, but I'm still uh, still considering. You know, I want to see who see who inquired and um, weigh out weigh out our options. But yeah, hopefully we have a new team member here soon. It would be good. Oh, it'd, it'd be so cool if we had a second location. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joyce is asking what the discount, the ten percent discount code is. There's no code. The site just today all day will do ten percent off. Yes, but it won't stack with not any others. So it won't rewards, stack with anything. Yeah, else. use those another. Yes. Another so use your use your rewards another time. Um. Yeah, I um. We have another shop hop on the. Do we tell them what it is? It doesn't have to be a secret. I know what it is. I don't know what the one is. I have a few like requests, but um, since I'm sharing armatures, I was kind of like hoping for the request that just decided to make an armature. Um, so uh, send your requests and um, maybe you can be our third shop hop this summer. But the next shop hop, I don't have the date in front of me. It's in June. We have today's and then June 9th is on the calendar. And I don't think I put July's on, but 14th. June 9th, is that just two weeks away? That's what I have on our calendar. Okay. <laughs> we'll confirm that. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do a kangaroo and I'm really excited about that. I've made kangaroos. Um, I have the armature all figured out. And I will share that armature with you because it is different and it is a little complicated. So I was excited about that one, just like I was excited about the whale. That was fun for me to, to look into because I had not done that before. So, yes. Yeah, so I hope you guys will join us then. Um, Teresa, do you have any other questions? Um, no, but it was lovely seeing the colors put together when yeah. I took the site you know you just see one at a time but seeing them stacked together really shows how they can work yes definitely i love the balance of rust you know warm rust colors against teal and purple and and that was what you had picked out so i think it's going to be i think it's going to be great and i i like the idea of this charcoal core i'm pretty sure um you put that in your cart um that is is made it's a gray that's made by putting brown and purple together or a, like a mm. warm, warm gray together so that will be a great a great base did um uh kathleen have any questions she had asked a question about the wire gauge for the antlers. okay okay i'll put in the email for uh armature requests 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. European fiber energy now. Yes. Yeah, I am loving this. I want to do, I wish I could do one every week. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's hard to help people one at a time sometimes, but being able to talk about why we're picking which fibers um, and which techniques are going to be used in this way that can be shared for everyone, I think um, I'm really excited about it. So, just checking to see if Kathleen would have some questions. Yes, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I think that's a really nice size. You know, smaller, then you can't get the detail that you want, and bigger is fun. Like I did, I did do one that was not quite twice as big, but maybe another, another, um, I don't know, another 50%. And, um, but it de does, it does get to be then when you scale up so much more detail that it doesn't just look like a stuffed animal, <laughs> like a cartoon. So, and, and then it gets a little weird, like, where do you put it, you know, when it's, so this is that this is that great size that looks great on a shelf, mantle, centerpiece, table, um, and is the right balance of enough detail, potential detail without um, so much detail. I always tell people when you scale up, it's not just so if you go fifty percent bigger in size, it is not fifty percent more work. It's like three times more work. Um, Kathleen did ask, would it be possible to have the list separated elk or stag? So yes, absolutely. I will, um, I will share the list in, um, in your email and I will, I will separate it out. I'll list all sure. of that on the video description along with the armature. Okay, cool. Cool. Very good. Anything? Well, thank you for having me and hosting my project. Yes, I can't wait to see what you make. Thanks for, um, you know, doing your uh, troubleshooting this morning and persevering to get um, to get onto the video. <laughs> Fun. Um, All right. Thank you, Teresa. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone.